friends, it's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm. And well, we've had a bit of a warm stretch. We had about five days in a row of record heat and we weren't expecting that. And it basically fried my 95 foot row of snapdragons. It's definitely setting me back. I mean, you can see from here, it's like some of the plants are just completely dead while others, well, they kind of fared okay. But you can see where, say for instance, this is completely fried. It is starting to grow new babies from the bottom. So perhaps this is going to be maybe a succession planting of snapdragons and some completely fried like this section right here, which is purple twist. Sorry about my finger in the way there. Let me move it. Purple twist snapdragons, they're awful. And then if you look right here, this section, this actually looks pretty good and that is called the Maryland Lavender. So these were all exposed to the sun. They were all hardened off for about two weeks before I even planted them in the ground. So while we have sections that look pretty good, this one is the Potomac Lavender. There are some that are just completely fried. The Lysianthus though, it's pretty okay. There are some sections that it burned up, but it's doing okay. This is very, very sad. Oh, like, look at this. There's just some that are, those are not coming back, but look, they have sprouted from the bottom. So this is kind of maybe a succession planting of snapdragons where they've fried to a crisp to the ground. Oh, very frustrating. I can tell you the difference. I'll show you actually the difference between these ones and the ones that are currently in the hoop house. So here is an updated look at things inside the hoop house. Uh, things are starting to look really good. So here's a look at the snapdragons inside the hoop house. This is the second succession planting. They look really strong and healthy and then move down a little bit. Here is the first succession. It's much, much taller and it's actually starting to bud up. There are some weeds in here. There's some grass and I think there's some chicory in here. Let me get this out. Uh, this stuff it is all over the place, driving me nuts. Look at that cluster of grass. Oh, see, but I'm bringing up a snapdragon with it, so I'm gonna leave it. So much, much healthier here in the hoop house. And you know, they've been exposed to the same things and uh, they just didn't fry. Wow, look at that patch. You're so beautiful we're starting to see the the heads form and just for reference my last frost date is not even upon us yet and I think I normally start to see snapdragons in bloom at the end of June so here's a look at some anemones in bloom um, I'll be actually cutting some of these shortly but some of them are too short and I will not be using them some of them have bug damage uh, but some of them are beautiful I'm just loving the pale centered ones they're beautiful and these purple ones are simply amazing as well they'll all be harvested oh this is one of those full star doubles i'll be harvesting that one as well Ooh, guys i can't even get over how beautiful they are here are more of those amazing full star doubles wow anyway oh there are some lighter ones just a lot of love, but look, some have bug damage. Um, these ones I'll probably harvest though. And now for what I know so many people are looking forward to is an update on the ranunculus. And I know it doesn't look like a lot, but that's because I just harvested. And uh, let me show you guys the bud situation. Can you guys see all those? There are hundreds of buds and some of them are an arm's length. This is a two foot stem. Um, they're all growing there. I mean, there are hundreds of them and they're coming on strong. I'm so excited. I mean, I just can't, uh, this is exactly what I was hoping for. Just the crazy amount of stems. Hopefully the next week or so I'll be able to be harvesting buckets and I'm trying my best to keep these cool because these guys are also stunted by too much warmth. So while it doesn't really look like much is happening when you take a look at the big picture, there are hundreds and I mean, if not 
over a thousand of flowers that are just getting ready. You can see how many buds are just filling up this space. Oh, oh my gosh. Thistle, thistle, thistle. No, thank you. Urgh. I use my hoodie to get rid of that beast. Ugh. Can't even handle it. Hate them. Oh, there are some weeds, but you know what? I'm not worrying about it. Oh gosh. Okay. We are lovely. This says it's the dark orange, but I think it's a lovely shade of orange. There's the black. Yep, just all of them loading up, getting ready to go. This right here is a little four foot poppy patch. And I started this from seed and I have never had success with poppies like this before. And they're just, they're getting, I showed you guys yesterday. Uh, they're just getting so tall and so robust and so perfect. I'm so excited this one popped open overnight. They smell so sweet. But yeah, I just think that you gotta start them early and get them in the ground early. And uh, this is what they'll do. There are like so many buds coming up out of the ground here. It's incredible. And then here I have a small patch of Lysianthus and way down at the bottom, I think is what I didn't show you is that's the stock. So that's another patch of poppies. Those are just popped overnight. And uh, you could see the, the pods still on that one. <laughs> But these are the stock and some I selected for doubles, some I did not. And I would say uh, they're about two feet tall now, these ones. And like we suspected, the ones I potted up into the 72 plug tray are blooming before the ones that I potted up into the 200 plug tray. So even though I started these all from seed at the same time, the ones that I potted up into the bigger plug trays are all budding up and blooming before the section that I potted up into the 200 size plug trays. So that was unintentional succession planting. I just have some lilies and crates going right now. Um, they're just they're just started maybe two weeks ago. I have some more right here. And I, yeah, there are some weedy sections, but I'm not worried about it. This entire section will get turned over and I'll put new crops in it in about a month. I am so excited for these ones. There's more of black ones, but then look at that one. It's like pink and white and speckly, absolutely gorgeous. Anyway guys, this is basically an update in mid spring for the hoop house. So will my ranunculus survive that heat stretch? I think it's safe to say, yes. We also have another three day hot stretch coming up next week. So I'm gonna to try to keep these as cool as possible. And I asked Dave Dowling, cut flower specialist, his advice on how to keep the ranunculus cool during hot stretches like that. And he just said, water, 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 shade cloth helps, um, and definitely open up the hoop house as open as you can get it. So that's what I'm doing. So it's not the, uh, you know, full in bloom picture of inside the hoop house, but things are definitely coming along. So anyway, guys, I have got planting, planting, planting to do today. It's a perfect day to get all of my plants in the ground. Not too hot, not too cold, not too sunny, not too cloudy. Perfect day for planting. So that's what I'm going to be doing, planting all day long. Thanks guys for sticking around. We'll see you soon.